Natalia and welcome back to another video. Today is going to be another fun Taylor Swift tutorial. This one also has the pattern that goes along with it, but plot twist, I'm using a pattern I've already put out and tweaking it a little bit to make this one because I think that's just gonna be easier and I also wanna show how you can like use the patterns and tweak them a bit to kind of like fit whatever you want. So I'm gonna be using the Better Than Revenge pattern to make the iconic purple dress that she wore on the Fearless tour. I keep wanting to think it's like a Speak Now dress because it's purple, but it's from the Fearless tour. So I'm making this for a customer, so it's not gonna be to my size, so I'm not gonna be like modeling it myself afterwards, but I'll show it to you guys on the mannequin as we go. I actually already made a dress for this customer and I made her the Better Than Revenge dress, so I quite literally have the pattern that I used for that dress that I know already fit her to make this one. So I have it right here. And I also wanted to share because most people don't fall into the like standard sizing perfect necessarily and sometimes I fluctuate in and out of it as well so when you like buy a pattern whether it's mine or anybody else's you can also adjust it to fit your perfect measurements so I don't remember exactly what the measurements were here but say you're like a size two on top four for waist and like an eight as you can see like I curved out some of the lines to kind of like fit the separate measurements that you need just to customize it a little bit extra to yourself. So just wanna put that out there. But I'm gonna be using this exact same pattern because it's the same shape as the Better Than Revenge dress, but the only thing we're gonna be switching out is the neckline for this one is a little bit more of a scoop neck and less of a like V neck. So what we're going to be doing for that is taking our center front piece, which is this one, as you can see, this would be the V, and we're just gonna bring this up a little bit and kind of just like curve it out so that it is a scoop neck. So I will obviously actually like share how I'm doing that, but that's what we're gonna do to change it. Other than that, same pattern, same dress. I'm not gonna do a like super, super in-depth tutorial. If you want that, you can check out the Better Than Revenge dress tutorial to get like the basics of it, but I kind of want to share more of like the trims and all the fun stuff that I'm adding on. That being said, let's get started. So here's my center front piece. Like I said, I want to just like scoop it out. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit and kind of just draw out the scoop. The key to a good scoop is to make sure that it really is a straight line for at least like half an inch here so that it doesn't ever like point when you cut it out and it actually creates a little scoop. So that is what that's looking like. And I'm just going to take note of how much I brought it up so I can do the same when I'm cutting out the actual fabric because this is a lining. And I brought it up about an inch, but you can kind of play around with however you want to do your scoop, you know? But now I'm just gonna cut this out and then we'll cut out the sequin fabric and get started. Okay, so I just cut everything out and I put together the lining. So just like basically all the seams and I finished all the edges as well. And I'm about to do the same for the front. I have it all, not pinned, what are these called? Clipped, clipped in and ready to sew. I've gotten a lot of questions on how to sew with sequins and honestly, I just haven't had any issues with it at all. I've been sewing them on my Juki, which I'm sure obviously is better than sewing them on a home sewing machine, but I have not had any issues with like the needle breaking or anything like that. And it's just been sewing normally for me. So I don't have any like tips because it's just, I've been sewing normally and it's been working. But I suppose if you're on a home sewing machine, I don't know, maybe it's not as like sturdy and maybe you have more trouble with it. I will say I do go a little bit slower than I usually do just because obviously as you are putting the needle into like you know so many sequins they do start to like break off and they just kind of like ladder a little bit so I just go slowly for that matter but other than that I sew like normal and it's been working so I don't know if any of you guys have any other tips of things that could be helpful for people leave those down below but personally I just like have had a good experience with it which like thank god because I have so many sequins to sew but that being said we're gonna put this together and then I want to put it onto the dress form and start playing around with all the trims and stuff maybe before I put the lining on it. I don't know. We'll figure that part out in a minute, but let's put this together. Okay, so 
here is the dress on the mannequin. Well, not like fully, it's just like the outer layer. I have not put the lining to it. Here is what I'm thinking. So I have this really fun beaded trim. I got a lot of it. I also have this really fun beaded trim, but like smaller beads. Don't have as much of it. And lastly, I have these little gems that go along the neckline, which I'm excited about, but those are gonna be like the last thing that you want them. So anyway, trying to figure out how I wanna go about this. And like, sure, I could like wrap the entire dress just like this, pretty much. But I don't know if I'm gonna hate that you can see all the little ribbons everywhere. This is my only issue because that little ribbon and like this ribbon are different colors. So I don't know if that's gonna like look weird or if it's gonna add to it, if it's gonna look like choppy. So I'm thinking I'm going to roughly pin it just to see kind of what it would look like and get a good visual for it. And if not, I was testing out like cutting off one of the beaded thingies and then I could literally just sew them individually kind of all over to give it more of a different feel. Or maybe I'll do a combination of all of that. I don't know, but I'm really hoping that it works for me to just wrap it, but I also want to make sure it looks the best it can. So if I have to do it individually, I might. But that being said, let's wrap this up. Okay, so here is the update. I did a couple of rows of the beaded one, bigger beaded one, and then this is the other one. And I like how it's going, actually. And I'm now realizing that obviously the more layers you have, it kind of covers up the ribbon. It doesn't look that bad, especially if I interchange like this one to this one a little bit more, because I kind of forgot I had this other one and I was just doing rows of this one. But if I did like a couple rows of this one and then this one, I think it could look really, really cool. The only thing is that I think I would have to start from the bottom and then work my way up so that I can actually like layer on top of it and not have to like go under each like layer here but I just wanted to see roughly what it would look like I think movement wise like super fun um but I'm gonna mess around with starting at the bottom and bringing it up and then kind of seeing where that takes us once I feel fully convinced of it then we will sew it down hopefully this works out because I am actually kind of liking this I really love this second friend I think it looks really nice and it blends so well with the like, purple sequins under okay so I've decided that I might I just leave this one whole like this a couple of times because I didn't get too much of it because I didn't want it to be like the majority I think this other beaded one looks more like the majority of the dress, but I don't I don't like the line I don't like it. I said it so you probably can't see this one But I just went ahead and sewed this one in place and I think I'm just gonna kind of start putting them everywhere Is this gonna take me forever? Maybe but Lately, I've been liking doing all the more like little detail handwork because I don't get to do that very often it's a little more relaxing than being at a sewing machine for me for whatever reason So we're gonna hope that energy continues as I attempt to put all of these on there. So let's do it Okay, so I'm liking the one by one deal a lot better aesthetically speaking time wise speaking This is gonna take me forever, but I think it looks really really cute I guess there's your up close and I feel like I don't have to put them that close to each other to get that effect So it might not take me as long as I think like they're not gonna be like literally next to each other So I really like it. I think it's gonna be really pretty it blends into this color so nicely Which is like the goal you obviously don't want it to look like it's not the same vibe So I really like that I'm gonna take a little break for today. I don't know if I'm going to continue this today or not, but we will get back to this. I finally finished beating the entire dress. So here she is. Sorry for that squeak. But anyway, I was playing around with this rim and I just like the top one. And I don't think I'm feeling it. Like I don't think it like adds as much as I thought it was going to be adding. So I think I'm going to just scrap it. 
Like I don't think we're gonna do it, but I wanted to show you guys what it looked like with it on. Anyway, I feel like this lighter purple just doesn't blend that well. It looks very like harsh. Like I wish it was more like an ombre effect, but it, like, it just looks kind of harsh. And as you can see here at the top, I left some empty space because the original dress has some like gems and stuff here. So I wanted to leave room for that because I did get those. So that's why I left a little bit of empty space here and also for like the seam allowance for when we put the lining on it, which we're about to do. Here's what it looks like now. I cut out two pieces from the lining to make the straps. I cut out 18 inches by two inches. They're gonna be semi thick straps, like nothing crazy, but I think it'll probably be like a three quarter kind of strap because that's what she has on, so it'll be something like that. So I'm gonna make this strap so that then we can put the lining to it, which I also have prepped here, ready to go, all pressed and everything. So excited to put this under it because I feel like right now you can see all the white of the mannequin right below this fabric, so it doesn't look as like purple, but once I have the lining on there, I feel like the purple's really gonna be like in your face. So I'm excited. But anyway, we're gonna start by making our straps. These are not gonna be adjustable because they are thick straps, like hers aren't adjustable and she has like little gems that go up into it. So you're gonna wanna like really measure out and make sure that this is like a good length for you, which I did so you can see it fits it perfectly. But yeah, that's a fair warning. So maybe like don't necessarily take my measurements for it and just actually figure it out for your body. But that's what I think is gonna work for me. So I'm just gonna fold these in half and so probably with like a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. And then we're gonna flip them out and iron them. And then they'll be ready to be sandwiched in between the lining and this. And I'm so excited. So let's get to the sewing machine. Okay, so I don't know how well you can really see this, but I've marked where I want the straps to be. So here's one pin and here's the other. And then obviously the rest of the strap is gonna be here at the points of the neckline. So I'm gonna take my straps and put them in their positions here. Make sure they don't get twisted when you're doing this because that's always my issue is that I accidentally twist them. So, so once I have that, I'm going to put the lining over top, match everything up, and then we can sew that neckline. Okay, so now that we have all that pinned, we're just going to sew half an inch all the way around. Okay, so this is what we're working with now. I am going to fix this little seam we just did by chopping it in half so that it's a little bit smaller. And then we're going to understitch it so that it turns a little bit easier. I'm gonna cut it smaller everywhere except for where the straps are because I really want that to be a very secure seam since this dress is so heavy, like a lot of weight is being put on the straps. So I don't want to take away any of that extra hold. I'm also going to clip this curve a little bit so that it turns a little bit better as well. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is move this seam towards the seam allowance. And then we're gonna do a little stitch right next to this seam so that when it turns, it's a nice clean finish. Okay, so now that that is on there, you can see it is nice and secure now. It also adds an extra sense of security to the straps to have that top stitch, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the zipper on. So I'm going to put the zipper just on the sequined side. I'm gonna line up the end of it to the end right here with a little bit of extra space, and we're gonna pin that. And then when you get ready to do the other side, obviously just make sure that it lines up here at the top so that it's perfectly aligned. So let's go take this to the machine. Okay. 
Okay, once you have the zipper in and you, you know, make sure it works and it lines up nicely up here, this is what we're gonna do to have this clean finish. I'm gonna open it back up and we're gonna take the lining. Well, we're gonna move this little piece over a little bit and then we're going to fold the lining over like this and then we're gonna sew right by like the little zippers, obviously not on top, but right next to it. And that's gonna create a really clean finish on the inside for the lining. So that's what we're gonna do on both sides. And then once we have that, we're just gonna finish off the rest of the seam normally for the lining and for the sequin. And then we'll just have to hem it, add the little jewels on top and be done. So let's get that going. <laughs> Okay, so here's where we're at. It looks so good. I'm going to go ahead and put all the little jewels up here. So I got little like oval ones like this and then a smaller size of the same one. And then I also got little squares in this like more pinkish color because if you look really closely at the original one, she has some in this color as well. So I'm gonna kind of just like play around with it and start placing them and hoping for the best. And we'll see how it goes. These are the type that have like the little hole here. So I'm just going to be sewing it in place. And once again, hoping for the best. So here we go. <laughs> that is it for today's tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed it i'm obsessed with how this dress turned out and if you happen to recreate it tag me i would love to see it or if you just use the better than revenge pattern for anything else i would love to see it so please please tag me if you do so i will have the pattern link down below for you guys to check out obviously and subscribe for more if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss out on all the next tutorials vlogs and all the things and i will see you guys in the next one bye